Now, reports of abuse and inhumane conditions in federal immigrant detention centers prompted California's Attorney General to take over control and monitoring of the facilities this year. Immigration and Customs officials say any past problems have been fixed and invited us to see for ourselves. Only on five, Alan Martin got a rare inside look. It looks like a prison, but it's not. This massive barbed wire complex in the middle of the Mojave Desert is California's largest detention center for undocumented immigrants. The city of Adelanto contracts with a private company called the GEO Group to run it for Homeland Security's Immigration and Customs Enforcement. So everyone here is here for immigration uh, purposes only. ICE's Tom Giles took us on a tour. Just like prisoners, detainees' every move is controlled. They live in locked housing units and sleep four to a cell. There's two hours a day to use the outdoor recreation fields and no internet. Telephones are the only access to the outside world. Geo guards conduct head counts five times a day. And if you defy orders, disciplinary segregation. They locked us up for 10 days. Isaac Lopez ended up there this summer after a hunger strike, along with Julio Bajarones and seven others. The problem is the bonds are too high and we don't have a way to pay. The men want out while they await their day in court because they say they never committed a crime, just asked for asylum after fleeing cartel violence in El Salvador. More than half of the detainees nationwide are asylum seekers. But just like others caught in the U.S. illegally, they too are locked up until an immigration judge hears their case. With the current backlog, that could take months, and if they appeal, even years. We worked with an asylum seeker who was in immigration detention for nine years. Christina Fialo is the founder of CIVIC, a national support group for detainees. She says ICE has abandoned a former unwritten policy known as catch and release. Trump's executive order in February not only mandated an end to catch and release, but it put a chilling effect on parole and bond. As a result, she says detainees are languishing longer and longer behind bars. We asked ICE's Tom Giles about that. Nothing's really changed. Our parole requirements are still the same. ICE also has discretion to issue bonds without approval from a judge, but the agency doesn't keep a tally. <laughs> For the GEO group, longer stays mean more money because ICE pays an average of $125 a day per detainee. Plus, detainees do most of the work for a dollar a day. Most of the detainees here do work. Again, it's voluntary. We don't make people do that, um, but they take pride in what they do. Taxpayers are footing the bill, but largely kept in the dark about how their money's being used. That's because privately run facilities don't have to comply with public records laws. For instance, during the hunger strike in June, Julio told us he and the other strikers were pepper sprayed and beaten. They beat me in the knees, stomach, elbows. They treated us like animals. They doused us with hot water. That made the pain from the pepper spray 10 times worse. ICE's Tom Giles denied the charges. The GEO staff is here for the safety and security of the detainees. In this particular incident, uh, no one was beaten um, or uh, physically harmed during um, this you know, alleged hunger strike. But detainees told us there's security camera video of those beatings. If they say we are lying, why don't they release security camera video? ICE says that a review of the incident, including the security camera footage, found that all proper policies and procedures were followed. But when we asked to see the video, the agency told us that it's geo property. We're still waiting for a response from the GEO group. I've heard horror story after horror story, and for us, it's important that we finally have some much needed transparency. Senator Ricardo Lara introduced a bill earlier this year that would prevent local officials from contracting with companies to build or expand immigrant detention facilities. These companies are strictly money-making machines that depend on incarcerating immigrants they don't care what their case is or who they are, and so they're just dumping everybody together. Meanwhile, there's good news for our two detainees. A coalition of immigrant rights groups crowdfunded to pay their bonds and free them, allowing Julio to reunite with his wife and a newborn son. It's been almost four months since they separated us. My dream has come true because now we are together as a family. 
Now they just wait and hope for their asylum request to be granted. Alan Martin, KPIX 5. And once again, we reached out to the GEO group for any comment, but have not heard back.